It is not the movement of the clock that produces the newness of life. It is the movement in your mind. You're going to hear all kinds of things said about you. Throw it behind you. The enemies that you see today, you will see them no more. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, God will condemn. This is my time. So the matter is everybody in here is going through a change. You don't have to be ashamed of yours. We are all in the process of transforming to a higher, better expression of myself. Let this be the year that I birth a higher, better expression of myself. Don't let the habits of my past Stop me from this metamorphosis. New year, new me. New year, new me. What separates us is transformation. The possibility of change. The desire to evolve the passion to get up off the ground and stop eating dirt. I'm, I'm tired of doing what I used to do. If I always do what I've always done, I'll always be where I've always been. I'm gonna throw it behind me. Somebody in this room that, that nobody would think would be in a church tonight, but you drew them to this place tonight because you want them to be a new me and a new year and have a new attitude and a new mind battleground is in your mind that's where the fight is you lay down with it you get up with it you go to work with it you can't digest your food because of it smiling in front of people and nobody knows that there's gunfire going off in your head it's not a geographical location it's not debt it's not money it's not haters it's not enemies, it's not liars, it's not backbiters. That's not what I'm trying to tell you, beloved, is that you can have a new year. But it don't mean Jack Diddley if you don't have a new mind. I'm telling you that you can buy a new car, but if you put the old man in a new car, you're still gonna have the old experience. I'm telling you that a new house doesn't make a new marriage. I'm talking about a new outfit doesn't make you a new person. And if you think you are magically going to be a new person, I hate to be the bearer of bad news because new life comes from a new mind and a new way of looking at your life. I cannot step into the future and still think in my past. I cannot let the rumors and the stain of what they said about me destroy my opportunity. Slap somebody and tell them I gotta kill it tonight. I gotta destroy it tonight. I gotta get rid of it tonight. I gotta throw it behind me tonight. I can't drag that same old mess into another year. committed because without commitment nothing happens if you don't learn to give like you learn to get every area that there is not reciprocity it will die reciprocity what do you give back for what you get if you're not committed you're not gonna make it 
even the ones with the personalities you don't like. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment. You have to believe in the we and the us and not the me and the you. Or you're not going to make it. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. disappointments, they don't leave us the same. Every painful time, even though you don't like it, it's developing something in you that can only be developed in the tough times. Eventually, that will pass. You'll get through it, but you will be different. In those tough times, when you're uncomfortable, going through a loss, dealing with an illness, you could easily let it overwhelm you. Now, how the pain changes you is up to you. You can come out bitter, or you can come out better. You can come out defeated, giving up on your dreams, or you can come out with a new passion, a new fire, excited about the new opportunities in front of you. I may not like it, but I'm not a whiner. I'm a warrior. I know I can handle this. Don't complain about the pain. Without the pain, we couldn't reach the 
fullness of our destinies. Sometimes we bring pain on ourselves. We make poor choices, get in a relationship we know is not good, or maybe get over our head in our spending. Now it's painful. We're having to deal with the consequences. All of us experience pain. My challenge, don't just go through it, grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger, to develop character, to gain new confidence. Anybody can give up. Anybody can let it overwhelm you. But you know what that's doing? Wasting your pain. That pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you, to increase you, to develop you. Difficulties are a part of life. Now quit telling yourself you can't take it. You're not weak. You are well able. Eventually, the pain will pass. You'll give birth to new strength. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. And there will always be forces trying to convince us to settle where we are. Life has a way of pushing our dreams down. They can become buried under discouragement, buried under past mistakes, there are dreams buried under divorce, buried under low self-esteem. It's easy to settle for mediocrity even though we have all this potential buried on the inside. What are you remembering? The hurt, the pain, what didn't work out? Turn it around and remember your dream. Have you allowed any dreams to get buried in you? At one time, you believed you could do something great. You believed you could lead the company in sales. You believed you could break that addiction. And it's been a long time, had some bad breaks, wasn't all your fault. You could easily settle where you are. Nobody would fault you. The enemy would love to deceive you into burying your dream, thinking that it's never gonna work out. Don't believe those lies. It's not too late to become all that you were created to be. Every time you remember your dream, you're removing some dirt. You're digging it back out. The true mark of a champion is even though some dirt gets thrown on your dream, instead of letting it get buried, you keep shaking it off. You keep moving forward. You wouldn't be having that opposition if you didn't have something great in you. If your dream wasn't alive and on track, right on schedule to come to pass, you wouldn't have so many things coming against you. That dream is still alive. You may have tried a year ago, five years ago, or 40 years ago. It didn't work out. Nobody was there to help you. Go back and try again. This is your time. This is your moment. Your destiny is calling out to you. Can I tell you, your dream is not dead. It's just not in season. Your time is coming. Promotion is coming. Good breaks are coming. Promises you've been standing on. Dreams you've been praying about. Lack is not your destiny. Constantly struggling, barely getting by is not the end of your story. These light afflictions are for a moment. The adversity is temporary. The glory is eternal. there are some dreams shut up in you. Like fire, you're going to feel your destiny calling out. May not have happened the first time. The loan didn't go through. You didn't get chosen for the part. The medical report wasn't good. That's okay, it's still in you. This is your time. This is your moment. Shake off the doubt. Shake off the negativity. You're at the right place. You're at the right time. Now all you've got to do is get in the right frame of mind. Lord, I believe this is my year to get healthy and whole. This is my year to meet the people of my dreams. This is my year to go further in my career, to step into a new level of my destiny. This is my year to accomplish dreams, to break free from this depression. This is my year to meet the right people. This is my year to get healthy and whole. This is your year to see double. This is your year for vindication, for restoration, for new beginnings. Now get your mind going in the right direction.
In what you've done with your life thus far, is it giving you what you want? Is it giving you what you want? When you look toward the future, when you look at all that's going on out here, is there some place within yourself you say, hey, I know I need to be out there in that arena. I know I can do more than what I've been doing. I know there's some great music that I have within me that I haven't brought out here yet. Is that something that you begin to look at within yourself? See, I say if you look at your life, and if, and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. You owe, if you're on a job, 85% they say, of Americans go to jobs that they're unhappy. If you're doing something eight hours a day that you don't like, it's not giving you what you want, it's not giving you a strong feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment, you're miserable, you hate to go there, you're depressed just thinking about it, you sing the Thank God It's Friday song every week. If that's what it is, you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change directions. See, but you know what most people will do? Most people will resist change. Most people will fight change as if change would be worse than what they're experiencing. See, they know this. They're familiar with this. Most people will not challenge the unknown. They won't just step out there. See, they, well, see, there are certain things that's got to be in place. They got to see it all together. And life isn't like that. That's not how you grow. So as you look at your life, you're saying, I'm not getting what I want. As you begin to look toward the future, begin to know that whatever it takes for you to create that, you've got that in you. You've got that. You've got genius in you. You've got goodness in you. You've got creativeness in you. If you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life, I say to you that you will find that the universe is on your side. That life is on your side. Now, will it be turbulent? Yes. Will it be easy? No, no. Will you have some opposition? Yes. Will I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Will I get hurt? Yes. Yes. See, a lot of people won't try anything different in life because they don't want to get hurt. Let me tell you something. It's too much pain to duck. Pain is everywhere. You can hide under here. It will come where you are. It's everywhere. Victor Frankl calls it unavoidable suffering. You can't duck it. But most people spend their life not wanting to deal with the pain of rejection, the pain of defeat, the pain of being disappointed, the pain of losing, the pain of failure, the pain of being criticized, the pain of not being liked, the pain, the pain, the pain. That's called life. Life is full of pain. It's everywhere. But guess what? There's no gain without pain. Because it's the pain of regret that's your experience if I had it to do over again that's a pain don't you know that's something when you know I was in a seminar once and this lady stood up if I had my life to live over again she talked about all of the things that she would do and you can feel the pain of regret in her voice the pain of regret she still experienced pain she was trying not to experience the pain of defeat the pain of disappointment the pain of loss, the pain of lack of support, and she still experienced pain. It was right there. We can't get around it. Most people are governed by their habits, their fears, and the opinions of others. A lot of people never try anything differently because they have been convinced by people in their lives that they value that they can't do it. They're living within the context of the opinions that other people have of them. The low expectations. Many people doubt themselves because when they thought about doing something at some critical point in their life, somebody they respected and honored, somebody they believed in, somebody that they loved, someone they trusted said, you can't do that. And they accepted that. As you look at your life, Ask yourself the question, 
What would your life be like? What would your life look like if you decided not to care what people thought of you? What would your life be like if you decided to give up some of your fears? What would your life be like if you decided to become courageous? What would your life be like if you decided to act on your dream, if you did what you felt in your heart? You know what courageous means? Tom Ruskin and Randy Reed said, they said that courage comes from a French word which means of the heart. But how does it feel to you? He says, it's courage, you know, it takes courage to, to live. Since most people go through life not allowing themselves to step out because they don't want to let go. They don't want to be blown around. They don't want to be moved. The courage to face life's whirling wind of contradictions. The courage to love yourself. The courage to love. For years, I was afraid to love. The courage to take a chance. The courage to be who you are. He says, courage isn't for somebody else, for medals, applause, or moral debts. Courage is what, at that moment, feels most right for you. Not just situational ethics, but what feels right in your heart. The word of the heart. What feels right in your heart. One great philosopher says, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. What does that mean? The valiant people aren't afraid? No, no, no. It means that they experience that fear and they move forward. They move forward anyhow. Many people are dead now. Many people are allowing their dreams to die. Many people are allowing the ideas to lie dormant and collect dust. Many people have all this talent and ability that they are lying to be in, buried inside of them, that they will take with them to their graves because they didn't have the courage to be who they are. And I say as you begin to look toward the future and manifesting your greatness, it's going to take everything in you, everything in you, that your life deserves the concentrated effort to begin to look at how is it that I can express more of me how is it that I can bring my ideas out here now? How is it? And start living with a sense of urgency because you're here today. You're gone today. Life is unpredictable. It's uncertain. There are no guarantees. No guarantees out here at all. So holding back, what are you waiting on? Ask yourself, what's the benefit of your waiting? What's the benefit of your not living your dream? What's the benefit of not listening to yourself? Oh, please. Listen to yourself. You know the feelings. If you start listening to the feelings in your heart, and I'm doing it now more every day, I find that my feelings, I can trust them. And I say to you, that as you look toward the future, you look at life on a daily basis, if there's something that you have been given, if you've heard something within yourself that you know that, that what you're doing now doesn't fit for you, it doesn't work for you, it's not giving you what you want, and there's something else that you want to do, don't allow that inner doubt in you to talk you out of it. To build a case on why you can't have it. To tell you why you're not good enough. You ignore that inner voice and all of the external voices. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances because the circumstances won't determine who you are. Don't determine what you're able to do based upon your resources. Don't determine what's possible for you based upon where your life is right now. Where your life is right now is not you. That's just what it is right now. But the possibilities for you are unlimited. If you're in a rebuilding process, it's unlimited. If you're coming back from adversity and devastation, it's unlimited of what you can do. That's the capacity of human beings. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many flops you've had. Doesn't matter how much money you've lost. In fact, I see it only as an investment. What you learn from life, not losses, but investments of what's possible for you. And I say to you that once you start listening to yourself and as you begin to act on your dream, as you start just trying to find your way, doing what you can with what you have, you will start seeing things opening up for you. You'll start attracting people. You say, where'd they come from? 
things will start coming together, clicking for you. You say, whoa, you start brainstorming. Ideas will come out of nowhere as you focus on it. The key to it is to begin to focus on what it is you want to do. Why, Les? Why is that important? Because as you focus on that which you want to do, that which we focus on, that which we give our energy to, it will begin to multiply. It will begin to expand. It will begin to develop your consciousness. And out of that comes your greatness. Out of that comes a commitment. Out of that comes a passion for life. Out of that comes a special power that you have in you that you haven't even called on yet. See, the, the powers that we have will never reveal themselves if we don't challenge them. If we don't put ourselves in a position where we have to use them. So one of the most important things is reading a book that's a really interesting book called Instant Millionaire. And the guy said, put yourself in a position where you can't retreat. Where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. So what is it? How do we handle that whole piece? Throw your whole self into it. See, most people go at it tentatively. They don't give all their stuff. They don't concentrate. They don't put everything they've got in them. One guy wrote a book called, All You Can Do Is All You Can Do and all you can do is enough but he said make sure you do all you can do and if we're honest this evening we know that we haven't done all we can do so as we look at the future we can decide that from this day forward as i look at my personal relationships if i look at my professional relationships if i look at my family relationships as i look at all the dimensions of my life looking at myself mentally emotionally and spiritually I'm going to do all I can do to develop me.